Detective Phil Phillips is a down-on-his-luck puppet. He used to work for the Los Angeles Police Department, but now he is merely a private investigator. When two puppets from an old TV show wind up dead, Phil is forced to team up with his former human partner, Connie Edwards, to find out why. Unfortunately, Phil and Connie don't exactly get along anymore, and the bickering duo soon find themselves in a race against time to protect the other former cast members before the killer strikes again. Now, no movie is perfect, and this movie is no different, so let's discuss some of the pros and cons of the Happy Time murders. Some pros? The humor. Happy Time may be a murder mystery of sorts, but this is a full-blown comedy. The humor found in this movie isn't so different than what you may expect to find in something like Sausage Party. It's not trying to take itself seriously, it's not a black comedy that can be dark and depressing, and it's not even trying to disrespect the legacy of a show like Sesame Street. The Happy Time Murders is just a movie that is trying to have some fun. The specific sense of humor may not appeal to everyone, but if you thought the trailer was funny, then you may also end up enjoying this movie. Granted, some jokes do fall flat, and the funniest bits were probably shown in the trailer, but there are still a handful of laughs to be had. My personal favorite jokes were those that made sense in the context of this world, because The Happy Time Murders does a surprisingly excellent job of world building. If humans ever had to interact with puppets as a sentient species, there are certain exchanges that would easily come across as humorous. In this way, the fictional world of Happy Time actually feels pretty well fleshed out. This universe is also made all the more believable thanks to the spot-on voice acting and excellent puppeteer work. The world building even helps bring out themes about racism and prejudice. Now, of course, these themes are overtly blunt and obvious, but at least a raunchy comedy like this decided to have some underlying messages. But one of the biggest pros Happy Time has going in its favor is the chemistry between its co-leads. Now, Melissa McCarthy is fine as Connie Edwards. She really just sticks to her usual shtick. But I was really impressed with her partner, Phil Phillips, which I know is a puppet. I was just really able to empathize with him and his story. He carries a lot of weight on his shoulders, and the guilt he has carries the bulk of the dramatic tension in the film. Bill Beretta did an excellent job making this character come to life. Though McCarthy is basically the same character she always is in any of her movies, she had excellent chemistry with Beretta, and they were able to riff off of each other really well. It's just a shame that their character arcs were extremely fast and predictable. Now, I have to give my appreciation to the puppet work to the director himself, who is none other than Jim Henson's son, Brian Henson. I was honestly surprised when I found out that Henson wanted to make an R-rated puppet film, especially after hearing that the Sesame Workshop filed a lawsuit against this production. But I respect his decision to do so. Puppets shouldn't necessarily have to be beholden to one specific genre. And even if the film isn't being critically praised, people are talking about puppets again. Henson had a fun idea that brought puppets back into the public consciousness, and I can't deny that I enjoyed it. Though I highly doubt Happy Time will ever get a sequel, I would love to see more films just like it. But to move on to some cons, although I loved all of the puppet work, I was pretty let down by the film's human cast. Elizabeth Banks is in this movie, for example, and her presence is completely wasted. Despite the importance that the narrative tries to force upon her character, she really adds nothing to the story. Joel McHale from Community has a character that is quite annoying, while Leslie David Baker from The Office feels bored and disconnected from the movie entirely. I may have enjoyed Maya Rudolph's delightful presence as Phil Phillips' secretary, but that's really about it. And though I enjoyed Happy Time Murders as a whole, I can't deny that the story itself is pretty average. Nothing about Happy Time ever digs deeper than what's beneath its initial raunchy premise. It doesn't deconstruct puppet films, and it tries too hard to go for shock value, which can often give the film a jarring tone. But the shock value never really works, because the story and the screenplay itself is pretty average and sometimes predictable. But with all that aside, I can't deny that I did have a fun time with the Happy Time Murders. Even when I felt like I started getting sick of all of the puppet-based jokes, the 90-minute runtime made this film fly on by. I really enjoyed the pacing, the world building, the puppet characters, and the tone, so I would probably give the Happy Time Murders 3 out of 5 stars.
Thanks for watching.